welcome to today's live Q&A um, for the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. My name's Sam um, and I'm from Prosper. We're helping to put on today's event. Um, before we get started into the event, before I welcome um, the, the speakers today, I'm going to firstly quickly um, acknowledge and pay respects to the traditional custodians of the land. Um, for me here in Melbourne, that is the Wurundjeri and the Boon Wurrungs peoples. Um, I'd also like to pay respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. With me today, I've got Kate and Ed from the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, and I might throw to them very, very quickly, but I'm sure you're all here to ask some great questions, so make sure you've got the chat function ready to go on Zoom. Start writing your questions in there if you have them already, um, and let me know whether or not you're happy to take yourself off mute and ask your questions verbally. Um, if you prefer, I read it out for you. That's more than fine as well, but we really want to make this as much of a conversation and very two-way as possible. But make sure you write your question first, uh, just so we can make sure we're sort of get, getting to as much of the relevant, wider relevant ones as possible. But without further ado, I might throw to Kate and Ed. Kate, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, everyone. So I'm Kate, this is Ed. Now, I know, I, I'm pretty sure Sam has given me instructions like three times today of what, of what we're doing. Um, I'm not very good at following instructions, but I believe I'm going to kick off, just give you a really quick introduction into myself and a few sort of key um, points and features about our grad program specifically. And then I'm going to hand over to Ed, who is one of our graduates from our 2020 cohort. So he's almost technically just graduated. We're going to have our graduation party pretty soon, which is exciting. And then Ed will give you a little introduction to his self um, and probably like, I guess, a brief um, history of his journey. So um, I'm Kate. I uh, look after the grad program here at PMNC. I have three other colleagues that work with me in my team. And we do everything from, I guess, like marketing, recruitment, assessment through to onboarding and then program management. So um, if you do apply for the program, You'll hear from me and my team like quite quite a lot from before and then throughout the whole program. Um, but in terms of our program specifically, um, I guess similar to other probably government departments, there's some of those key things like the positions are based in Canberra. So anyone wanting to apply for the program would need to consider relocate, relocating to Canberra. But we do offer relocation assistance and Canberra winters are actually quite stunningly beautiful, would you say? Yes. And so don't be put off by a Canberra winter if people tell you it's really cold. I mean, it is, but it's beautiful because we get the sun every day. So just consider that. Um, but I think some of the sort of special or like unique features that um, we really like about our program is that over the 12 months, the journey is, is basically yours. Um, you are responsible for finding your rotations, rotations that, fit either within your skill set or something that you've just been thinking you want to learn about. Maybe you met someone like at the coffee shop and you heard about the work that they do and you want to join their team and you essentially are going to make that happen. So it really is up to you. We put some support mechanisms in place to obviously help you make that happen. We have um, a buddy program, a mentor program. Um, we do networking events with the department for you to be able to connect with and hear from other different areas um, but essentially the, the journey is yours. Some of the parameters around that include you, you must do three rotations um, and within those rotations they can be a minimum of eight weeks and a maximum of four months and those are pretty much the only rules in terms of the rotations. Lots of things here at PMNC come up all of the time as well so I think especially for Ed's cohort um, when COVID hit and we had to redeploy a bunch of um, our graduates and graduates actually across the APS to Services Australia to help assist with um, job seeker and other COVID related inquiries. That was a big part of the program, um, a really interesting experience for anyone who was able to do that. But I think that's the one thing here about PMNC is that I guess when the website says that like priorities will change, priorities really do change and we we work on those priorities and we essentially do what is asked of us by the government of the day and it is a really exciting feature about PMNC. Um, but that's just that little introduction into that and of course most of that information is is on the website but I know that you may have specific questions 
relation to that, which I'm sure will come up soon, but I'll hand over to Ed just to give a quick intro into his self and maybe his grad journey. Yeah. No, more than happy to. So I guess just starting off echoing a lot of what Kate said, that this program is quite flexible and it is unlike any other program offered by um, particularly federal Commonwealth departments. Um, personally, I can't speak to state because I don't know, <laughs> but definitely at the federal level, definitely echo what Kate said. But um, as Kate has mentioned, I was a graduate um, in the 2020 graduate program, so last year, um, and I've just finished the program and um, have moved into my permanent position. Um, myself, I moved down from Sydney, so not too far, just down the highway, <laughs> um, according to Ken Barron's. Um, and the winters you do adjust to, but they are quite nice. Um, but the journey itself really is up to you. So the ELP team really provide the support and the resources to if you're not sure who to go to or what to do, um, there's different networking events. And really, once you've set yourself up in PMC, you, the work we do, we really work across. Um, you might be in a specific team, but um, even working that specific team, you will coordinate with a number of other teams. So you meet a lot of people in that department. And I guess for myself, to give a bit of background, because you might be thinking, am I the right person to join PMC? Um, PMC has a number of people from different experiences, different backgrounds, different university degrees. It's not a one set profile of PMC. Um, and I guess to give an example of that myself, I studied um, law and business at UNSW. Um, and before um, coming to PMC, I actually undertook a two year, I guess, graduate health management internship program in health. So I worked for two years in health. Um, in New South Wales and then saw the opportunity at PMNC and just it interested me it looked really um, being at the central um, of government operations and applied for it and um, had done my master's of health management as well so I guess what I want to say from that just very quickly is you don't have to have one set degree it doesn't need to be business it doesn't need to be IT like Unless if you want to go into a specialty area, say as HR, then maybe that's like a preference of that particular area. But generally, PM and C will consider different degrees. Um, that's something I really want to emphasize because I know when I went through the process, I was like, oh, do I have the right degree? Do I need to have certain skills? Um, it really is a diverse mm -hmm. workforce. Um, and just I'll quickly finish it off just with my, I guess, my journey at PM and C. I first started the infrastructure team. Um, and from there, uh, so when I was based there, COVID obviously hit, so a lot of work came in because of aviation. From there, I went to government division, so worked in the legal um, policy team, to moved into economic division, so trade and investment team, through to cabinet, so I guess cabinet operations. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to fiscal, um, mm -hmm. and then I went into my permanent area. So I really spent uh, about... 12 weeks in each of my rotations. And I found that a good, a good range to really dig your teeth into some, some meaty stuff, mm -hmm. not to sound cliche, but it's that perfect time. But as Kate said, like it's very flexible. It's minimum eight weeks in a rotation up to four months. So it's really on you as to what your preference is and, and how you feel. But I guess I'll leave it at that because I know you've probably got lots of questions, but hopefully that gives you some insight into the program itself and where I've come from. Awesome. Thanks, Kate and Ed. That was fantastic. Um, now I'll jump into the fun part of the event. Well, not that that wasn't fun, um, but the question, the Q and A part. Fun. You know yeah. that's <laughs> it's true. Um, <laughs> this, yeah, this part's the Q and A part of the event. So I'm sure there's a few of you that had some questions already prepared, um, or might have thought of some as we were listening to Kate and Ed talking. Then um, I definitely, I know I've had a couple of you emailing me with some questions in advance. So if you're one of those keen grads, get them in right now because we've got about 70 or so people on the call um, and awesome. yeah it's gonna hopefully be able to get through as many as possible but um, if you could write it in the chat function let me know whether or not you're happy to read them out loud yourself or if you want me to read them for you I'm more than happy to do that um, for the team but as I said before I know Kate and Ed are definitely keen to see some faces and hear some um, hear from you directly we want to make this as much of a conversation as possible um, and we've got one already in from Jessica um, which is about, um, and Jessica, are you happy to take yourself off mute? Or would you like me to ask that one? 
that's right, I can ask that one. Um, it's about the rotations and how, how uh, the question is, do you get to choose your rotations? I think you said before you, you do. Maybe could you yeah. could you explain how that how that actually works? Like how you, you pick your preference for rotations? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for rotation one, we will place you for rotation one because it's probably a bit daunting to go, oh my God, I don't even know a lot about PM and C and really what PM and C does. It's kind of hard to know until you're actually here. And I think once you've been here for a year. So We'll place you for your first rotation, um, which is based on, it will be based on your degree, um, your preference. And then you'll see in our application form, we do ask you to write maximum 200 words of why you preference that stream. And we use that to help inform um, your first rotation. But after that, you will absolutely choose your own rotations solely on the network opportunities, the network events, sorry, that our team will put on for you to connect you with business areas. So you can rely solely on that to hear from business areas that have an area available and you can connect with them after and say, I'm interested in coming to do that work. When can I start? You can talk to Ed and say, Ed, can you actually connect me with someone from GovDiv? Because that sounded really interesting and I think I'd like to try that and he can put you in contact with someone. You can ask your mentor when we set you up with a mentor when you get here. Um, you can simply like use the directory and go, hmm, behavioral economics sounds really interesting. I might see who's in the team there and maybe just ask someone if they're happy to have like a 10 minute coffee with me and chat about that. So you can choose your own rotations in any way that suits you you know I guess communicating and networking people have different preferences of how they like to do that and we like to try and support all of those different preferences in how people like to connect you can also just call our team and say I'm struggling a little bit I'm thinking I want to try something in maybe coordination outside of policy can you give me some tips and we can go from there too does that help I think so it helped me um, so hope, hopefully it helps uh, yeah. Jessica as well would you um, say anything else? There? A few nods on the screen. Uh, there. I was just going to quickly add yeah. to, to Kate's point. Um, just quickly, in relation to picking your own journey, I know you'll be looking at other grant grant programs, and it will. You may have other friends in grant programs in other departments, and you've probably heard the conversations around. I put my preferences in. Um, here is literally pick your own journey. So, as Kate said, the team will put you in your first rotation. That literally from there on in there's no preferences so it's really you network reach out to people um, people in pmc are very easy going you can flick them a message and be like hey do you mind if i chat to you about what your team does so really there's no preferencing there's none of that system as part of this journey it is really what you hear and what you see is what you get at pmc it's pick your own journey yeah. um so i just want to clarify that because i know you've probably heard some things around preferences that is done in other departments, but here it's really, yeah, you pick your journey. I've got a question here from, and apologies to everyone, I am terrible at pronunciation and names. So if I get it wrong, I am so sorry. Uh, but from Clara, um, regarding, um, actually, I'll let you take yourself off mute and go from there. Thank you. No worries. And you got it right. It's all good. <laughs> Um, I just have a question regarding um, the type of projects you've worked on in your graduate year, because I understand there's lots of different teams within Department of PMNC, but does the work tend to be quite interdisciplinary in terms of working with other government departments as well on your projects? Yeah, so I guess it's a good question, um, and it really depends on, on the team that you're based in. So I guess more broadly at PMNC, as you know, our, our role is to provide advice and support the Prime Minister and the government of the day. And it's really about coordinating our whole of government perspective. So ensuring that um, we've got a, I guess, a single focal point of um, the government being on the same page with things. So I guess, I guess with that, with our role, um, you'll tend to do correspondence, you'll do briefing to the prime minister or cabinet secretary, um, which is a position within the government that leads meetings. Um, oh. but the particular teams, there might be certain reviews that might be undertaken. It really, really depends on the area. So if you go to say behavioral economics, they really project based, they've got longer term strategic work that they do, um, looking at potential implementations with the projects they look at. Um, whereas say, when I was in infrastructure or trade and investment, a lot of that was about liaising with that particular department. So when I was in infrastructure, our key stakeholders would be the Department of Infrastructure, 
and we'd really oversee that work and it would be briefing the Prime Minister on, um, I guess, policy issues within that space. So I guess you could say there are some stock standard tasks that occur in every team within PMC, but then it will really depend on the area you go in. So um, if policy, it will be very more policy-based focused, whereas if you go to say behavioral economics, it will be more that project-based, mm -hmm. longer-term implementation, yeah, research mm -hmm. type of work. Um, hopefully that's a bit clearer, but happy to clarify if that wasn't too clear. No, that was great, thank you. I'm gonna to throw to Angus next with a question about um, pathways. Here we go. Uh, hi, um, thanks heaps for doing this today. Um, I appreciate like the chance to get to know a bit more about the program. Mm. Um, my question was just more about, um, so the graduate program is awesome, but if we are, we don't actually receive a, a position in the graduate program, whether there's other entry level programs that we can apply for, or there's other ways to kind of get into the department that, are, that aren't just based around the grad program? Yeah, good question. Um, there is, but even with the grad program itself, if you apply in the process and you make it to assessment centre and you're told that you've been found suitable and you've been placed on the merit pool, which is if anyone's applied before, that can come up a lot. Um, in terms of a PM and C, that merit pool is, is widely used. Um, we put a lot of work into our assessment process and we're always really, really proud of, I guess, the pool of candidates that we have at the end that have either made, made it to, I guess, offer stage in terms of the grad program or that have made it onto the merit pool of suitable candidates that would be just a generally a really, really good fit here at PMNC. Um, so after we have finalised our graduate offers, we circulate that um, merit pool through to the entire department to say, if you have, you know, if you wanted to make any offers to candidates from this, you can absolutely use that. Um, and that definitely happened um, for the last two years. People have been made direct offers through the department, uh, like into the department from that merit pool. And usually what we say, if people have been made offers through that process, we will still like invite those candidates to be included in any of the graduate program things. So you won't be able, you may not participate in rotations because you may just have, you know, one job in say economic division, but we will invite you to do all of the learning and development or some of the events or the activities. So that is definitely one way that the graduate program, I guess, assessment process is still used to make offers. Um, in terms of other entry level programs, our grad one is the main one. Otherwise we participate in other specific um, indigenous focused entry level uh, pathways that say Department um, Services Australia run, for example. Yeah, great. Thanks very much. That was, that sounds awesome actually. Yeah. So, thanks very much. That's okay. I had a question here directly, Kate, um, regarding yep. while we're on entry and the like. Yep. Unless, Angus, did you have any follow-up to that at all or all good? Uh, no, I, yeah, I mean, that answers my question, so I'm good. Awesome. <laughs> um, there was a question here regarding um, ap applying for the 2022 graduate program um, through the disability or recruitability uh, stream. Um, yeah. In terms of like what level of disclosure is required, um, like is a doctor's letter sufficient or what, what sort of like support do you have in place there? Yeah, um, so in terms of disclosure, nobody has to tell us what their disability is. Um, you know, that's definitely not a need, a need to know for us. In terms of reasonable adjustments, if you, if you haven't yet looked at the application form, but that is where we ask those questions. So um, this year specifically, we tried really hard um, to make the application form, I guess, uh, a better suited application form to help support the entire process. Um, so what we've found, and I guess feedback that we've had is that if we ask what somebody's reasonable adjustments are, we're asking at every stage, which is actually really unhelpful for somebody who is having to, you know, give that information all of the time. So this year, what we've done is we've simply said, you know, do you identify as having a disability? Um, if you do, we say, what reasonable adjustments, you know, would you require or would you like to request? Um, and then we have specifically what our assessments are going to be, 
what typically could be some um, adjustments people have asked for in the past. And then we just ask you to put in what you re would require. And then at each step, we'll say, you know, this was, you know, the request that you've, um, that, that would support you through the process. This is what we're going to be applied. Would you like anything else? Or would you like to, you know, discuss any of the assessments in particular? Thanks, Kate. Hopefully that answered um, that, that part of that question. I've got a question here now from Leanne um, regarding uh, a particular point in the application process. Leanne, are you happy to take yourself? Yes, here? yes. So hi, Kate and Ned. Hi. So I'm currently, hi, I'm currently in the process of filling an application and I noticed that in the info pack at the end in the frequently asked questions, it talks about a one page pitch, oh. but I'm not sure where I should attach that in the application form? Yes, sorry, you don't need a one page pitch. Um, that's something that is used for all other roles. Um, that, it, Like if you're applying for any other role in a department other than the grad program, you would have to do a one page pitch. But for the grad program, we don't actually ask for that. So you don't need one. Yep, thanks Kate. Okay. Awesome, I've got one here now. Um, Regarding job content, which I'll ask um, for Jiang, um, if we, um, the question is, and I think I might direct this at Ed, um, mm -hmm. what's a typical day in the life look like? Uh, mm -hmm. What sort of daily tasks are you doing? Um, I guess daily tasks, it really depends on priority of the day for the government. So I guess really to give an example last year, um, when I was in the infrastructure team, the, and I guess a typical day would be you might get requests from the department you're overseeing. So if in the infrastructure department, the infrastructure minister will write to the prime minister or the assistant minister to the prime minister. So any of those letters that come in, um, we support the prime minister and the assistant minister accordingly and prepare briefing and draft responses if required. Um, and provide that to the parliamentary. What's an example of a question you received? Um, a question that we might, that I, I guess an example of a briefing that we, we might receive is the Deputy Prime Minister might go, um, I guess, for example, at the moment, we've got budget at the moment. So um, I guess for anything to come forward to the budget, the, um, I guess it needs to be put on an, an agenda, you could say with any meeting, um, so usually the Prime Minister will go, yep, um, as a government priority, we really would like to hear that agenda item um, to be heard for budget. So um, we will liaise with the department to understand really what the that minister is proposing um, and really understand and then brief the Prime Minister um, and draft a response of the Prime Minister back to, to that minister. It could be the minister seeking policy authority on... Uh, I'll make something up now um, to allow us to keep green sheep at, mm. at home. So we'll have to look at from, we'll have to brief the Prime Minister going, do we think from a government and Australia perspective, uh, policy perspective, is this a great policy? We'll brief the Prime Minister um, on our thoughts and we'll also draft a response and be like, dear Minister, we agree to allowing people to keep green sheep at home. Um, and mm. Uh, provide approval that the regulations in relation to agricultural or pest control or what um, it might be. So there's some tasks that you could have. It could be some longer term pieces of work looking at um, how could we improve the, I'm trying to think when I was in infrastructure, it was looking at how best could we support the infrastructure industry throughout the COVID pandemic. So um, it was really about supporting, but looking at a broader research piece of mine was to look at what states and territories are also providing the, the infrastructure industry. Um, so I guess there's some, some daily pieces of work. You'll attend to meetings. You might get some random requests from the um, prime minister or the assistant minister. They might be having a meeting with um, the CEO of Google. So you'll have to put together a briefing pack for the prime minister or the assistant minister. So. Um, they're prepared and briefed before they head into that meeting. So there's some some daily tasks that that you kind of um, will undertake in your rotation. 
exciting stuff. Um, Marina, I might throw to you next. Um, if you're happy to take yourself off mute. She's still on the call. Well, she might have dropped off the course. So maybe I'll ask. I'll ask for her because uh, it's a good, good question. Cool. Um, in terms of the PMC grad program, what does it do to stand out from other grad programs? I know you said you can pick your own, but there's anything else um, that really makes the Department of Prime Minister's um, grad program stand out from other, both private and public, I as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Good. Really good question. Um, there's. Yeah, there's probably um, a couple of things which we've already highlighted. I think the um, opportunity and the freedom to choose your own rotations and really drive your own career and your journey, I think is a really key feature. Um, also within our program, we offer the opportunity for um, promotion to the APS6 at the end of the program. So it's not something that a lot of the other no, no. What was that, sorry? Oh, no, someone, that's okay. Um, yeah, not something that a lot of the other government departments offer. So in terms of our progression, everyone will start at the APS3 level. Um, you'll automatically progress to the APS4 after six months. And at the end of the 12 months, there's an assessment process to um, provide everyone an opportunity to be promoted to the APS5 or six. So there are probably two things about the, the program. Otherwise, I think the other key feature here at PM&C is that whole of government perspective. So you're not just, you know, I guess, whereas like Ed said, if you're sort of at Department of Health, you're really focusing on health related topics, issues and policy for the Australian people. Here at PM&C, we really do have a really broad range and oversee a broad range of topics. Um, that, that are going to affect Australians. And it's a really, really good experience yeah. to get that and I exposure. Think, yeah, and I think just to go off that quickly, because mm -hmm. I know we've got a lot of other questions to get to, but with that particular um, question that's been asked at PMC, I think what stands out as well is, say if you're on the infrastructure team, yes, you're overseeing the um, Department of Infrastructure, those components, but when things come to us, we will... Um, We'll engage with our other teams, so we'll engage with our employment mm -hmm. team, and that, and it really is a whole government perspective. So even though it's an C perspective, we want to make sure mm -hmm. the policy decision that's being made has been considered as a whole, mm -hmm. considering other impacts um, mm -hmm. on other departments or other mm -hmm. policy decisions. And I think with that as well, at PM and C, um, a lot of task forces can be set up, and a lot of different opportunities can be set up. So. I know at other departments there are other task forces within them or setups that might occur, but at PM and C, if something is a, a government priority or is of a PM um, is on the PM's top of the list, it usually I won't say all the times so a caveat. It really depends on the circumstances, mm -hmm. but a lot of the times you'll see it is set up within PM and C because the PM really wants to have oversight and really wants to see where it's going. So the, when the bushfires occurred. The National Bushfire Agency was set up, Recovery Agency was set up as a portfolio agency within PMC. Mm. When COVID hit, there was a COVID task force mm -hmm. um, that was set up. And then further to that, there's been other task forces that have been mm -hmm. set up. Um, drought, flood, yeah, child safety. Drought, flood, child safety. Violence, like, um, officer yeah. women. Yeah. There was the National COVID Commission mm -hmm. Advisory Board, which mm -hmm. brought in the private sector to provide mm -hmm. advice and support to the Prime Minister. So there's a lot of ample opportunity in PMC. Yeah. Something's always happening. Yeah. Um, deregulation was brought to PMC. So mm. um, I think that's a really big standout. Yeah. There's a couple of questions here regarding um, the streams. And I might throw to Ashley, um, if Ashley's happy to um, take themselves off mute to ask the question about the generalist corporate stream, because that answers a couple of, couple of grads asking about that. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Thanks, Sam. Uh, hi, Ken and Ed. I was wondering whether you could kind of clarify what the difference is between the generalist and corporate stream. Um, I'm a bit unclear reading the website, and so just hoping okay. you can expand more on the differences. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Um, our corporate stream, I guess, is really aimed at those more like the technical degrees. So your HR, finance, IT, accounting, 
applications. Um, those sort of, I guess, we, we hear at PMNT call them enabling services because those degrees um, or, or people with those degrees that are working in those areas, our enabling services are providing the support to our policy areas to deliver the policy and to give them the tools and the technical advice and whatever they need. So I guess that's a difference in terms of if you were thinking about applying for either. Um, in terms of then the program, there's not a huge difference in that if you're in the corporate stream, you're still going to do rotations. You can still choose your rotations. Um, we still want you to go and do a policy rotation to get that experience. But with the corporate stream, the area that you start in is the area that you would end up in back at the end of the program. So whereas with the generalist stream, um, these guys do have to find wherever they want to be permanently and make that decision and go and get that job themselves. In the corporate stream, the area that you start in is the area that you'll finish in. Is that yeah, helpful? so if I'm interested in policy, it would be best suited I apply for the generalist stream. I just wasn't sure whether studying law was considered a technical field or not. Uh, no, yeah. no. Not, yeah, not yeah. a not Yeah, a okay, sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks for clarifying. Okay. Hopefully that answered a few, because um, a couple of questions there about the stream, so hopefully that covered it off. Um, actually, there's, a, there's probably one that's a bit of a follow-up there. Um, yeah. It's regarding the, please specify within 200 words about what yeah. the stream you are, you want to be a part of. Do you have any tips for that, that part of the application process, Kate? Um, no tips, but I would, when you're writing that, I would think about what you're actually interested in initially when you're thinking about coming to PM and C. So we will use that 200 stream preference to help decide your first placement. So I would really use that opportunity to um, research the department, have a look at the org structure. Um, if you know your community, if you know other grads that you've been talking to and they say, this is a really interesting area, use that um, to help us inform where you might be placed first. Awesome. Um, I've got a couple of questions here that I'll read out on behalf of a couple of um, a couple of the grads. Um, the first is just to clarify okay. um, citizenship requirements, if, if we can. Kate, is yep. it Australian citizens only or? Um, Australian citizens only, yeah. Is that a, and that's a requirement of the Australian government, if I believe that correct. That's pretty consistent. Absolutely. All Commonwealth. Yeah. Yeah, that's across the Commonwealth. Yeah. Um, I've got a question here as well from Giovanni regarding um, the international relations. Um, the question is, you know, could you please tell us more about the work uh, of the Asia, the Pacific and the global interest teams and the scope to become an IR security Ooh. specialist within PMNC? That's, that's, a, that's really specific. Um, that might be something that if, if maybe, was it Giovanni, did you say Sam? Yep. I think he's nodding on the if call he's there. Probably, yep. Yeah, no, that's okay. If he's happy to email that one through, I I know that our national security area, um, there's, it's a lot of coordination work. Have you done a rotation in national security? Yeah, so I haven't rotated in international security, um, international Policy. divisional national yeah. security, um, two areas. Mm. Um, but I briefly know because I've had a few um, other grad friends go through international. Um, and you do liaise with international quite a bit, depending where you are. But definitely send in the question. But I can tell you there would be a lot of there's a lot of coordinating. So yeah. say if the prime minister is going to meet the prime minister of um, Canada or the UK prime minister or the president of the US, that particularly international, um, era, the team in international that oversees Asia um, will prepare the briefing and brief the PM in relation to who. Um, he'll be meeting, providing updates on the relations between the two countries. Um, there's, in the global interests, I don't know specifically, but there is a specific team in international that also um, leads a lot of some of the, like, ASEAN, so more of those global bodies and Australia's, um, I guess, commitment or mm -hmm. our policy focus um, with those um, broader global um, organisations. So it's really about court coordinating but I think there is some broader policy um, elements in there but I yeah, definitely think follow it up with Kate yeah and we can email that one more, through yeah. yeah give you a bit more of an in-depth answer it's very specific thanks very much 
Yeah, I think it was okay. A, there were a couple of grads that had that a similar question as also um, Warty, I th Waity, I think that's your name as well. Um, same same approach, I think, straight through the, the PMNC okay. team. Um, another one, it's again, it's a little bit specific, but it it is a good question. I think it sort of plays to the wider um, sort of culture and the approach to um, you know being um, you know not partisan and, and the like. I might throw to Joshua here for a question about experience of the Queensland politician. Yeah, g'day Kate and Ed. Um, I'm currently studying my masters at the moment. Um, and while I'm doing that, I'm doing work experience with a state politician, um, knowing the APS requirement to provide free and fearless advice does having work experience with a partisan organisation put me at a disadvantage in my application? Oh, gosh, no, not a disadvantage. Absolutely not. Okay, excellent. No. I think, I think I'll go, like, I'll just talk to that as well, um, Josh. You worked. Yeah, so I, um, I haven't worked with um, any political party, but there are opportunities. So when you come into the APS, we are apolitical, that's our role. So we're to serve the government of the day, we're to provide advice on the policy that's in front of us. Um, but within PMC, I guess this is another advantage as well. Um, opportunities might come up for jobs up in Parliament House working in a minister's office. Now it's up to the discretion of the, this is once you finish the grade program, so not when you're in it, but it's up to the discretion of the team that you end up in. If you are given the opportunity to uh, potentially work in a minister's office, there is, again, caveat, depending on the circumstances, you could take some leave without pay and actually go work in the minister's office and you can come back to your job in PMC. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely no disadvantage. Um, I know a few people that have worked in minister's offices. So um, don't let that experience you have um, discourage you from applying. Awesome. Thanks so much. That was very helpful. Cool. Okay. I might throw next um, to Fahim. Um, Fahim, are you happy to take yourself off mute or would you like me to answer, ask that one? Um, thank you very much, Sam. Um, uh, hello, Kate and Ned. Uh, my question is um, in regards to more about the soft skills um, that are probably required at uh, PMNC. So from your experience, what do you think are the skills and attributes um, uh, that are considered most valuable as a department, um, as a graduate and moving forward um, as an experienced professional within the department? Yeah. Um, yeah, I can start first and tell you, I think what we look for um, in a graduate and what we will look to assess as part of the, the process. And then probably Ed can talk to his experience about what he, he's seen. Um, we, uh, collaboration is really important. I think that ability to be able to um, collaborate, like listen, take on feedback um, and really consider all of that when you're looking at shaping policy or writing briefs. Um, adaptability, really, really important. So I know at the start we said, you know, priorities do change really, really quickly at PM and C. Um, that's not just kind of like a like a, a buzz fluffy thing we put on the website because it might sound a bit exciting. It, it actually happens. You know, one day you could be, I mean, for example, two, two grads within Ed's cohort um, who were working in two different areas. Um, I rang them both one afternoon and said, you know, there's a review um, into some of the allegations that have happened at APH There's a review happening. They're looking for some grads. Are you interested? You would have to start tomorrow. So you need to go and talk to your supervisor um, and let them know that that's happening um, and make sure you can start tomorrow. And they were like, okay, no problems. So adaptability is really, really important. That ability to be able to go, Right, that is a priority. Um, that's what the Prime Minister has asked. So therefore I do need to be able to stop what I'm doing and move. In that becomes like, I guess that whole resilience and flexibility piece. You know, you can just sort of stop what you're doing one day and start something new and, and change that mindset really, really quickly. Um, and I think with that as well comes a lot of teamwork and relationship management. You know, if those grads specifically then did have to go to their supervisor and say, listen, I've just been asked to go into this review task force. Um, I know that that means I'm going to have to finish this off really quickly. Here's what I've done. Here's what I'm going to do. That ability to have that 
like conversation and keep that relationship really strong and sort of not burn those bridges because you're probably going to go back there after is really important as well. What would yeah. you add, Ed? So I guess, um, so Kate's really spoken from the application, what they look for from mm -hmm. um, when you're applying. So I'd echo all the, pretty much all those skills and from having been in the graduate program, collaboration and working in a team is what we do every day. Like we, even though we're in, we'll work in our team, but with everything we do, we work across the department. We're engaging all the time with different teams. So it's really about collaborating. Different areas might have different views on things and it's about us coming together and being able to decide um, and really, I guess, yeah, come to that critical point. With that as well, it's being analytical, thinking strategically and critically as well, thinking broader picture, what are the priorities? I, I think particularly when I've experienced this with COVID, we had to be agile, flexible, and just adaptable at the end of the day and really just be, be yourself, but mm -hmm. be open to new opportunities. Um, really take the opportunities of... Um, if you're successful, just come into this program with an open mind. Um, that really will lead lead you places. Mm. Um, hopefully, that gives you a bit more insight to the soft skills. That, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much to both of you. You're welcome. Fantastic. I'm going to try to um again. Sorry for the pronunciation. Uh, Guan Ming. Next, a great question about uh, world clouds of the journey. Hi, this is Guan Min. I got a question to Kate uh, and Ed. Um, you may have heard of word clouds. So it's um, an image where uh, people's work um, or the studies, um, their keywords are put into one image. And mm -hmm. usually it's in different colors and different size. So what kind of words have you imagined before taking the program, which means we, what was what in your mind when you the night before you, the night before the, your first date, um, and what kind of words are gradually replaced, and what kind of words are slowly added to your word cloud? Um, especially, I want to hear the comparison between the first date and the last day of the graduate program. Okay, so I guess you're. Yeah, yeah, the I, words you thought it was going to be yeah. to your reality, I guess, or your expectations. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's a really good mm. question, is making me think. I think, <laughs> I guess, first day or night before, um, excited, nervous, um, scared. Um, but I think as time goes on, I think the words that would come into my image, I guess, would be proud, committed, excited. Um, I'm trying to think what else would just it's been it's been a really big journey yes yeah, supported um, recognized it's yeah, it's a really it's a really good question so sorry I'm not giving the best <laughs> answer yeah um, I was after like what kind of software or tools you would expect because like if we were a tech savvy guys or you thought oh i will, I will uh, fully maximize my uh, excel skill or uh, sharepoint skill but in reality in the reality these skills may not be needed in your daily work so i just want to hear the insights from your one year completion um i guess it's hard it's hard for me to say because i'm not from an I, a technical IT background. I think. I think if you're technical in a certain aspect, mm -hmm. so I can't talk from a technical point of view, but I think you'll always be able to utilize your skills mm -hmm. to an extent in PMNC. Um, we're always looking for new ways, innovative ways mm -hmm. to work that are within our remit and mm -hmm. to what we can do. It's always about looking at improving. Um, so I think you can always suggest potentially your the particular skill you mm -hmm. have and you want to bring that to the team. Um, so, but I can't really talk from that technical mm. point of view because I, um, yeah, I can't, I don't have that experience. I can probably say, um, you know, one thing that we, um, you know, I guess for us in terms of when we recruit and, and decide on our final cohort as well, 
Um, we take grads from a range of different degrees. So even within Ed's cohort, Ed's from a law business background, but we've got an aerospace engineer. We've got someone who had a master's in cybersecurity. We've got anthropologists. We've got economists, um, accounting. That there's a, a range of degrees, and 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 we do that with intent. Um, and one thing that's really important that we tell grads at the start of you know every year and at induction, and that and that we try to sort of, um, I guess, reinforce throughout the program is that. While your degree is really important, it really is because it, you know, you will bring a lens and you'll bring um, a, a skill set that comes with that degree. While that's really important, what's more important is your ability to be open-minded and to learn and to, you know, um, like always, I guess, think big and take things in and take on feedback and that continuous learning is really important because we do do a range of different things so your skill set and your degree is really important but what's more important is um, everything that you're going to learn and take on and reapply over the 12 months thank you i'm going to throw to claire next um it's a great one about um conflict resolution Okay. If Claire is still, oh, she might have jumped off. That's all right. I'm gonna. No, speak am, out I off, am I off mute? Oh, oh there we are. Yep. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Sam. Hi, Kate and Ed. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, kind of about conflict re resolution. Um, so if you get into the graduate program, Ed, is there like some sort of training? What's kind of done? Because I'm thinking all these people from all these different areas that are sort of many of whom are probably this is sort of the first you know venturing out um after uni yeah how does that what does that look like how does that develop into the culture that you're explaining earlier Kate like you know yeah, could you elaborate question. further? <laughs> yeah, no, it's a really good question. Um, and over the 12 months, um, we do um, have a range of learning and development offerings that it's it's actually the, also the one part of the program that we also make mandatory. We really do make it mandatory um, and, and almost where we can't force, yeah. strongly encourage guys that they have to attend um, all of the training because it's a big part of it. And we talk about it in sort of two streams, like a, a, a technical um, stream of learning and then more of that personal professional development. So in sort of the technical things, you're gonna do things like intensive writing, which is sort of that writing for government. So, so you're gonna do your intensive writing, you're going to do economy um, for non-economists, there's um, policy legislation, international policy, um, budget cycle, um, best practice regulation. Best practice regulation. So those are sort of some of the technical learnings that um, you'll do that you know will help you in in each different rotation. And then in that sort of that professional personal development, um, we do you know networking, communication, and and teamwork. We do feedback, um, social intelligence. Um, you know, adapting, especially adapting to your or or your you know career advice during change so there's sort of those two streams that are to, to help guide you through the 12 months too that pretty much covered what I was wondering so thanks for that yeah you're welcome yeah because I was wondering how it would all pan out and work so thanks yeah. <laughs> awesome thanks Claire thanks Kate um We've got about 10 minutes or so remaining of our allotted time. We might be able to go a little bit over, maybe. We'll see how Kate and Ed are going. Um, but if you, so if you've got any questions, get them in now uh, while we still have Kate and Ed, because I, this is, you know, you're not going to get this opportunity again anytime soon, I don't think, to have, you know, such great insights. So get them in now. I'm going to whittle off a couple of rapid fire questions, though, roughly around the recruitment process, yeah. more so at, um, at you there, Kate. Um, Questions in regards to how many how many um, offers are going to probably go out this year? Obviously, but might not have a set number just yet. But how many roles are on offer at um, PMT? Yeah, twenty give or take. Yep, very competitive as well. I'm sure receiving 
the other part of that question was how many applications are you receiving? And again, varies, but yeah, um, generally get around fifteen hundred. Yeah, but should they? I mean, I guess yeah. the, the question is, should they be um, building off that? Should they put off by that? You know, twenty rolls. No, I wouldn't. Be, no, don't be put off that. Um, don't be put off by that at all. And look, I say twenty. Um, that's 20 sort of offers within the grad program. Um, and I know I spoke about that merit pool earlier. We use it, we usually like to have about 40 other sort of suitable candidates in that merit pool that we can share with the department as well. Awesome. Um, I saw you shaking your head there, Ed, as well. You reiterate that. Don't be put off by the numbers. Yeah, no, I think, and I know I'm at PMSC, but being a grad as well, I think you need to not be put off by numbers. It is very competitive. So I'm a person that seeks opportunities and just throws my hat in the ring. So with this process, all departments are gonna receive lots of offers. So I think don't be put off by how many people are applying. Put your hat in the ring, um, do your best. Um, something will, will happen, whether that be PMC, whether you decide to go into private. I think as generally just as a grad, and this is me talking personally now, don't be put off by numbers. Really, if it's something you're really wanting to do or you're really interested in, take a shot. Go for it. You never know what will happen. Um, so, yeah, don't be put off by numbers. Awesome. Um, in terms of the assessment centre, I've got a question from Kayla who's mm -hmm. on the train, so I'll read it out. Um, sure. Are they going to be in person in Canberra or online for the foreseeable future? No. Yes, we are going virtual again this year. There's just still too much uncertainty for us to try and plan for face-to-face -face because it's a big logistical process. We, we love it every year, like it's really exciting, but we're going to have to go virtual again this year and, and hope that, you know, after a big vaccine rollout that we can come back to face-to-face -face next year. Awesome. Um, question here also about selection criteria. I know you sort of touched on it more broadly that you're very keen on variety of students, variety of roles, but any, any other sort of last minute points on the selection criteria, Kate? Anything that should um, stand out particularly? No, I would just have a think about um, communication, teamwork, problem solving. Um, you know, I guess a little tip as well. One thing that's really, really important here um, at PMNC is diversity and inclusion. We really pride ourselves on an inclusive culture. Um, and it's something that we wanna make sure in our graduate cohort or anyone that we're making an offer to that they have a real genuine desire for a diverse and inclusive workforce as well. So that's something to really consider. Fantastic. Um, we've sort of touched on it more broadly in terms of the streams and the like as well, but I do have a question here um, from Maya regarding work in the communications division. Um, is that something again something yeah. they can pick as part of their streams is yeah. their opportunity yeah. for PR? yeah we've got a really good comms team and actually um jack one of the grads in yeah. um ed's um cohort he did a rotation in the speech writing team um through comms and now he's he's found his final job back in the comms team doing like internal comms strategies so yeah absolutely awesome um a good question here from lucy Lucy, do you want to say, take yourself off mute? Oh, hi, guys. Um, I was just wondering, I understand with like um, all of the government graduate programs, you can apply for streams. Would you guys recommend just applying for your stream or applying directly to you guys? Um, I'd do both. I'd really do both because I think um, Ed made a really good point before. You never know what opportunity could come up. Um, and if you apply for our program, you know, there's a likely chance we'll offer you a role but applying through the stream you may also be offered a role from another department and then that's really your opportunity to go where do I think I really want to be what values like to speak to me most um, so I would apply for both yeah I've got another question here from the end about working with other departments I think Ed you mentioned before about working with department of infrastructure but you know is that pretty common like you work with other departments whether it's DFAT um, I mean, it, infrastructure, so, things yeah, like that? It's, it's definitely common. So um, infrastructure, I liaise with Department of Infrastructure. When I was in trade and investment, I liaise with DFAT on the trade aspects of things. Um, when I was in fiscal, I liaise with finance quite a bit. Um, so really it depends on the, the team or the area you're in. 
Um, and it depends on the team you're in, the level of engagement you'll have. But usually when departments send through things, you're on the phone talking with them or they'll be picking up going, oh, we need to do this. Can you suggest the best way for us to um, get our minister to the right to PM or how can we bring this to the PM's attention? So you'll you'll engage to some respect with the, the department that I guess your team oversees. That's probably the best way to put it. Awesome. Question from me, um, I say is in the chat. How'd you find the move to Canberra, Ed, from Sydney? Um, so I guess it's not a big move. I know <laughs> other people make big moves from Perth. Um, for me, it was, it wasn't, I wouldn't say tough, but it is, it's something very, you don't know what to expect. Um, but ELP were really supportive with um, removal, like removal assistance and that. So you have that support. Um, if you're granted an offer, there's also, um, they provide you, I think it's two weeks accommodation in the yeah. apartment. So like there is some support there as well. Once you get here, Canberra has great restaurants, um, bars, depending on what you enjoy, hikes, mountains, yeah. like we're Batemans Bay, so the coast is about two hours. We're not too far from the Snowy Mountains yeah. either, through a few hours. So um, look, at first it's a new town, a new city, but even with the great cohort, once you mm. form, you really build a connection with your the new group that you're in. So you'll organise after work drinks or catching up on the weekend um yeah don't don't be afraid canberra people go oh it's canberra canberra is very different it's, to what it was years ago i was about to yeah. say it's come a long way in the yeah. last five years yeah it's even got a light rail now we have a light rail <laughs> so uh, i must say yeah. i've been, i've enjoyed it too on my visits and i'm from melbourne and it's the the, the winter is not definitely not as bad um the sun's the out the winters yeah, yeah. yeah. um in term, actually building off that, you said the graduate cohort, Ed, do you have much connections with grads in other departments as well? Um, so I personally, personally don't, but there is, I'm going to forget the name of it now. The acronym is SNOG, SNOG, SNOG I think, which is the social network of graduates. Graduates. Yeah. yeah okay. I didn't <laughs> know the acronym. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so obviously you connect with your grads in your department, but in Canberra as well, there's a a group called Snogs. Mm. Um, they're a big Facebook group. Yeah, the they're, pretty, a big they're face, pretty big. Yeah, they're big. They have like elections president, yeah. events coordinator, like all that kind of and stuff. And they'll break off into like social yeah. things and be like, right, like we want to organise like the social netball yeah. team or whatever. And then all the grads in that yeah. like big Canberra network mm. can then join those yeah. different little social things. Or Yeah. So if you really want to, I guess, um, connect with other grads from other mm. departments, suggest so um, looking into that group. And that's mm. where grads from across other departments um really they all go to really because yeah. a lot of people are new to Canberra mm. um, everyone's in the same boat and they're looking for to make new friends and mm. create networks and that um, so just yeah looking at the social network of graduates <laughs> I've got last couple last couple of questions that I did get a direct question from one of the grads um, regarding there's one of the questions in the recruitment process is about the age range um, yep. is that because you're looking specifically just for a particular candidate pool or is that more just, just no gosh no so in I think in that whole sort of section we ask a range of different questions about have you lived overseas are you have you served in the defense force um all of that is 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 us getting an understanding of the people who are applying so a big thing at PMNC is that we shape policy to implement the Australian uh, I guess to, sorry implement to like impact positively on the Australian people. Um, the Australian people, as we know, are a really diverse range of people. And we want to, I guess, get, you know, for ourselves like a sense and a bit of a reflection on who is applying for our program. So it's it has no bearing on who gets a job or not. It's just for us an understanding of who are the types of people applying for us. Awesome. Um, I might ask this one for you, Claire. There was a question about um, the, a sort of support for dog facilities, particularly for assistance dogs. Do you have much um, information on that, particularly for Canberra? Okay. Oh, as in if that was a service you required when you got here? Michelle, they let you follow up. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was wondering what kind of um, facilities you've got for dogs <laughs> generally. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
outside of Canberra, like outside of work hours and um, in the office? Yeah, definitely. Um, in terms of any sort of support services, um, the department is is really, really open to supporting anyone with um, plenty of different needs. So we have um, an entire team um, who are our sort of wellbeing support and rehabilitation team that work with those individuals specifically on those requirements. And so whether that is somebody who, um, you know, does have a support dog whether it's needing really specific software that could be speech to text software, it could be um, screen readers, um, it, it could be anything, but, but that team work really closely with the individual um, to pretty much ensure that any support that they need prior to coming, during, um, or, or you know, post graduate program and ongoing is facilitated. Awesome. Um, I've got, there's one more question I'll ask um, from the crowd that I'm going to throw to you both for a final note. Um, just regarding the recruitment process more broadly, I think CI asked about the online assessment, but maybe you could just give us a, just a quick general overview of what the, the recruitment process is like, Kate, um, yeah. and a final tip on that as well. For sure. Um, so yes, after the application form, anyone who's eligible will go through to the next stage. Um, that next stage is a series of, of online assessments, which I know can either sound like a little bit daunting or a little bit tricky. But um, one thing that we like to do here at PM&C is everybody has the opportunity to do every assessment. So that includes like the cognitive, cognitive ability tests, a few maybe problem solving things, we have um, situational judgment, which is just about how are you going to respond to a real work life situation and the video interview. Um, so everyone has the opportunity to do all of those. They have five weeks to do them. And the purpose of that is because we know that, you know, your, your cognitive ability results only do not give us an indicator of whether you're going to be a grad suited to our program. So we like to get that holistic view of who some of you of who somebody is right from the beginning. So um, from there, when we determine suitability after those, it's basically then straight into um, you're invited to the assessment center, which is um, three tasks. There'll be a written assessment, um, some speed interviews, um, and a group activity. And they're all well, really thanks. Fun. Thanks, Kate. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, here, where am I? Yeah, sorry, I'm Sahir here. Mm -hmm. okay. Hi. I don't know where's the video. E yeah. Hi. So actually, my uh, I am thinking about like the diff there are different online uh, assessments, like you know, like maybe not in the sense where you are in the practice of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of the assessments like yep. working memory and kind of um, challenges, you know, online challenges, like sometimes like game kind of um, assessments, H how important they are like in the recruitment process. Like if a person like me yeah. <laughs> was not so into it yeah. because it's all about getting into the practice and you don't have that enough time where you can practice all of it and yeah. be really good at it because it takes time to be good at it. And these assessments where you're not very familiar with the format so yeah thank yeah. you yeah no, that's okay there's two things to that firstly um you can actually google like practice cognitive ability test and you can do many practice ones online um they all quite they're all quite similar you know to to a degree so i guess that's just something for you to consider if you were thinking i've never been able to practice one you could just google practice cognitive ability test and you will be able to do one online um, and then in terms of how important is it um, it's a factor but it's not a deciding factor so the okay. reason we have yeah no because, because it, I was like what how am I going to do that because it, it, it is difficult when you're not into it of course it takes time like it it is very difficult to kind yeah. of decipher some of the uh, processes um, that are kind of you know being given so that you can attempt and then go through it yeah no of course and it's the reason why we like to give candidates the opportunity to do all of the tests that we have on offer at that initial stage um, okay. because we know that either we know that this it, go, it goes two different ways either people aren't so good at the online cognitive tests because you know, that can make them nervous and they can get distracted. We also know that 
um, people don't love interviews. That can make people nervous and they're going to flunk an interview purely because of nerves. So it's the reason that we get everybody to do the range so we can have that, you know, holistic view of somebody's, I guess, capability um, or their suitability to the department. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. I did lie a little bit. I got one, I do have one more question I've got for Ed. Uh, but feel free to, and then, then the final wrap-up question. Um, <laughs> for students who do land a job with PMNC, um, what advice would you give them to help them survive and thrive in their first year? Uh, is there anything they should particularly do? And on the flip side of that, anything they shouldn't do? Um, look, I think you'd get a different answer who you speak with. I think for me, what not to do. Um, I guess, look, if you're busy and inundated with work, you say, look, I can't get to it. Um, I've got a lot on my plate. But I guess what I'm going to say to this is if an opportunity arises, don't say no to it. Really think about it and really just accept what, or not accept, but I guess be open, as I was saying before, be open to the opportunities. Um, I guess to get you through your, your grad year, it, look, the first few weeks, they are overwhelming. Any new job, if you're in a new city, it's going to be overwhelming. Make those connections with your grad cohort grab a coffee, even with your new team, um, any new team I start in, I really get to know each person in my team. I go and have a 15, 20 minute coffee to not only just understand how long they've been at PMNC, but just to get to know them because work is a big part of your life. And mm -hmm. I think if you have any problems throughout the year, if you're not too sure, Kate and the rest of the ELP team are around, um, they're always happy to help. I think give yourself a break when you need a break, if you need to have a break, talk to your, your manager at the time, talk to ELP. But I really think just take take the opportunity and just really be open-minded to the different things that will come your way. Um, I know that's probably not going to be the answer you may have been mm -hmm. seeking because it was very open and broad, but I think that's what got me through the year was mm -hmm. really being open to the different rotations, um, being in a new city, just exploring Canberra. There's a lot to see. Um, and if you need to, if you're... I got homesick last year. Tell a close friend in Canberra. Um, I haven't spoke to Kate when I mm. got a bit homesick last year. People get it. It's reality. Like, um, yeah, don't be afraid. Just, I know it's cliched, but yeah, just really, really give it your best shot. Fantastic. All right, final, final question. I, I promise this is in one sentence. <laughs> why should students apply for PMNC? And I know you both said it somewhat already, but I'll start with, I'll pick on you a bit more again, Ed. Uh, I'll start with you. One sentence. One sentence, why you should apply for payment C. Yep. I think you should apply for payment C because it's a unique opportunity. Um, it's a unique opportunity with the, with the experience or again, the opportunity to see a whole of government um, approach to policy and with that, I know this is greater than one sentence, there will be opportunities at PMNC that are not available at other departments. I think that's something that sat with me. Kate, same question. Why should grads apply for PMNC? Grads should apply for PMNC because it's their opportunity to drive their career. That's what they're going to be able to do here. And we're going to support them. And sentences can have lots of ends in them, can't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and generally, the environment at PMC is a really open one. I think we mostly work with a flat structure where perspective um, and diversity of thought is really, really valued. You're not going to feel like a number here. I've heard someone from the, in fact, one of one of the guys from this year's program, he's not on the poster, but that was our 2019 grads. Um, he left out and he was he was so sweet. Like I adored him. Um, and, and again, you know, he was very open. He spoke to us lots. He left our program mid-year because he wanted to join the DFAT grad program. He got into the DFAT grad program oh, mid-year. Yeah, yeah Will. Um, and, and he accepted the DFAT grad program and he went. And then when we had the graduation for the 2019 
um, program, one of the grads invited him to come and we were more than happy for him to come along. And so we spoke to him after and, and we were like, Will, you know, how are you? How's your DFAT experience going? Um, and he was like, I feel like a number. <laughs> he's like, I really, you know, he's like, I think I sort of took the PMNC opportunity for granted a little bit. Um, I've gone into DFAT, which is this huge beast. It's this huge moving beast. Um, and he's like, you really do sort of, I guess, start at the bottom of the chain in DFAT. He's like, at PMNC, um, my opinion was sought out and it was respected and they wanted to know my views. And I think that's like a really unique thing here at PMNC generally, not just in the grad program, but as part of our culture. Awesome. I think that will wrap it up there, I reckon. Um, thank you to Kate and Ed for a very, very insightful hour or so. Um, I definitely know I got something out of it. So hopefully the grads mm -hmm. on the call did as well. Um, thanks to everyone for your great questions. Um, for those of you who took yourself off mute and um, showed your face as well, definitely big thanks. For those who couldn't, no worry. Definitely thanks for your questions as well. Um, we'll call it quits there. The recording will be made available after the fact as well um, in sort of the coming week or so. But make sure you get your applications in because applications are open right now. Isn't that right, Kate? Okay. Closing. Yes. They close on the 11th, midnight the 11th of April. So um check over and head it out it's a pretty simple application form um and yeah it's been actually really great thank you all for joining and spending some time with us this afternoon as well i've i've really enjoyed it and i'd say yeah thank you for all the questions and yeah. what i've said today take it as my personal experience <laughs> so definitely not something as all grads yeah. uh, that was my perception and my journey and my experience um and i guess not even views of say pmsc as a department it was mm -hmm. really my comments today were what I've experienced um, yeah. throughout my year. So yeah, thank you for your questions. Yeah. And good luck. Definitely throw your hat in the ring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Thanks everyone. And we'll see you at the next event. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Thanks. Sam. Bye. Bye.